All right. Well, hello and welcome to the PMQ live update for today, Tuesday, October 5th. Uh, I know it's been another long trek in between, but we're going to be doing these monthly to give you guys time to digest it besides overloading you. But I couldn't wait any longer because this one's going to be fun. It's my good friend, Mr. Lee Hunzinger of, well, Lee, tell us who you are and what you do because there's so many things you do. I think you probably tell it better. Oh, dude. My, my name is Lee Hunzinger. I am with uh, Zoli's Pizza. Uh, Thunderbird Pies, our new concept, uh, and Carne Rosso uh, here in, uh, right now we're in Dallas, Texas, but we're DFW area uh, with location down in Houston as well. Uh, lifelong pizza maker. It's my 37th year making pizza. Uh, wow. The reason why I know that is I'm going to be 50 next month. So uh started when I was 13, you know, uh, a lot of pizza. That's what I do, and, and I, I live and breathe it. You know, uh, I made pizza at home on Sunday. So, uh, tells you <laughs> well, how much how much I love pizza. No, absolutely. I mean, uh, pizza keeps you young, man. Pizza keeps you young. So, um, well, as you had said, this is Lee Hunzinger. He's of Connie Rosso's, Zoli's, and Thunderbirds. But today we are really um, here to kind of talk about this new endeavor that you guys have. Um, it is called Thunderbird Pizza. So why don't you tell us a little bit about, uh, tell me a little bit about Thunderbird. Thunderbird Pies. I'm so, sorry, I keep saying pizza. It's not that. We are uh, you know, a Detroit-style pizza concept, uh, which is a first for us, right? I mean, grew up growing up, I made pan pizzas. I, I love making pan pizzas. Uh, it's a personal favorite of mine. But, uh, you know, in New York, we made a, a Sicilian uh, or a grandma-style pizza. And, uh, you know, what really got hot uh, over the last few years uh, nationally was, was Detroit style pizza and uh, yeah. the first one I ever had uh, like a real deal uh, Detroit style was uh, via 313 right here in, in, in the great state of Texas and uh, yes I am in New York I love Texas though it's great here and uh, <laughs> but at any rate those guys uh, Brandon and, and, and Zane they do such an incredible job uh, they, they were definitely my first time having what was you know called authentic and, and it was love at first bite for me uh so uh it wasn't something that i thought of right away like oh i'm gonna start making this and and it just wasn't at all uh initially you know and and we, we love pizza jay jerry the owner uh you know chef, chef back of uh i believe it's right behind me now uh <laughs> and and really a lot, a lot of people like that that work for our company we're pizza enthusiasts as well and we love to eat pizza and, and all shapes and sizes so uh we when when the pandemic happened uh when when shit started getting real with that uh we had ordered some pans and and just to do some r d with and and start playing around uh with making them and and like anything i, I wanted to do it the right way and get yeah. the right cheese and and uh uh, I didn't ask too many people. Uh, I, I'd say uh, that, that Derek Tong, oh my gosh, I'm sorry about that. Derek, Derek Tong in Chicago, Apologies Logan Square, uh, mm -hmm. was so, so uh, such a, a help uh, in, in any questions that I had having to do with this. And, uh, you know, my my things that I didn't know, I'm, I'm the kind of guy that'll, I'll try to figure out things out by myself. And, uh, and I did. I just wanted it to be better. And uh, we a couple of long conversations with Derek helped me understand things a little better. In which, uh, and, and he he's had great success with it with his Logan Squares and uh, such a great guy uh, as well yeah. too. So uh, love Derek. Yeah, I was just saying absolutely. As a member of the pizza team, he's always there helping out the other guys as well. So yeah so uh we ordered the pans we played around with them did a little r d and uh it didn't take long to get to where we you know we really liked the pies and we wanted to start offering them and selling them so we started well, uh as the pandemic happened i'm sorry cut you off well i was just gonna say how did you actually start um because this wasn't this was began as a ghost kitchen concept right so yes exactly so what we did was uh at the time you know, with Zoli's and, and our dining rooms, I believe, were closed at that time, too. It was the beginning of the pandemic, and uh, sales were way down, right? Everybody yeah. was feeling it. Uh, it was the same here. You know, we, we feel, especially in the very beginning, and, and uh, we want to do something to try and, just, you know, create another revenue source, right? Bring in more income, something that people didn't know about, but we knew it was really good. So 
uh, because we, we liked it as well. And and any rate, <laughs> we, we started selling them at Zoli's. So like our, our ghost kitchen was in our restaurant, more or less. So we, we were offering them, it all started, we were offering them in autumns, like when it wasn't as busy because we're selling round pies, square pies there, garlic knots, all that stuff. So to throw another style of pizza into the mix, uh, is a little can be a little hectic, right? So, so we were offering just in the beginning, Monday through Thursday, and we were offering them starting at three o'clock. We were doing it earlier in the day, just people wanted them earlier. Uh, you know, we started at, at, at three, and what was happening is we, I was prepping up, and we were offering sixty pizzas daily, and we were offering them at three o'clock, and by like three twenty-five, we sold all sixty. We were done, you know, <laughs> and and uh, then we were prepping for the next day, and uh, you know, slowly but surely that, that initial, uh, uh, I guess the buzz that there was, you know, people want what they can't get. So people were getting shut out from trying to order it. So then they were trying the next day and, and at any rate, it was, uh, it was really awesome. It, 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 I mean, we were done, we were, we were starting to sell them at three and we were done making them by four thirty. So it didn't really even interrupt dinner service initially, uh, which was crazy. And we were just prepping, you know, start stretching out pies for the next day. But, uh, uh, huge success. We had a separate menu that we put online. Uh, they set up a website on the bird pies and all the ordering. They can order. Uh, init- initially, we were doing it uh, through in-store pickup only. Uh, uh-huh. So, it, you know, you couldn't order from our Zoli's menu. We had customers that were calling up. Eventually, we started where people can just call up or walk in and order one. But initially, we did all of the ordering through online uh, and, and separate, a separate menu at that, too. So uh, when the tickets came in, you know, a big boom, Thunderbird pies on the top. and really didn't interfere uh, with what we were doing or confuse anybody as well, too. And uh, I don't know, it, you know, it was it was the pies. There's a lot of prep that goes into them, uh, mm-hmm. but we found it uh, it's not too hard training people on that, uh, you know, and and we, we knew right away that I know Jay knew right away that he wanted to open up a brick and mortar and. Uh, so that that was in the plans uh, not long after we started the ghost kitchen okay well that's what i was going to ask next was it did this kind of start as just for fun or was it a serious you know endeavor to try to build a new brand on you know under your guys's roof you know get it launched like you said once they can't have it now they want it maybe test the waters to see if it was worth investing the money and i do want to let you guys know um you can ask your questions here of lee live he'll get to them uh, basically, you can yeah. put them uh, in the comment section, and I'll make sure he answers them. But so, was there a concerted effort to start a new brand, or was this just more for fun as it started? And then you said he eventually did go to brick and mortar when it became so popular. Yeah, I I, I think initially, like we were set up where uh, we wanted to get something like a new concept going right away, like right away, you know, and and it wasn't uh, anything other than like we knew the pizzas were good. We don't know how the city of Dallas is going to, to, you know, uh, react to them and, and, uh, how it was going to mm-hmm. be, uh, um, uh, the word I'm looking for anyway, how, how they would like them as well. Uh, being that it was, no. it's, it's like anything. Yeah. It's just kind of feeling it out, seeing the demand for it in this city, in this market per se too. And, and the demand was there right from the start, I guess yeah. until, until you actually see, see the numbers and the people buying the pizzas is that, that, slim you know is it is it gonna happen kind of deal and uh but there was no question you know after the first couple of days we were like this is the home run slam dunk and you know we were ordering more pans right away and uh yeah. scrambling to do so like that too and uh so yeah i mean that that was one thing i, I think like anything yeah it was definitely a test but we had we had a pretty good idea uh that it was gonna it was gonna do well in a very humble way dude believe me i, I you know, that's one thing with all this stuff. There's a, there's always the chance, you know, that, that it might not work, you know, and, and absolutely, uh, you know, we, we, we had, a, we had a good feeling about it just because we like to eat and we thought they were pretty good ourselves. Yeah, so. Well, was it, was there any hesitation to open up now in the middle of this pandemic or was Jay just like, we're doing it and we're doing it whenever I want to do it, regardless of whatever's happening I mean, in the we, world. We were doing it. it. It took a lot longer. Than, than expected so i mean it, it got drawn out and obviously construction delays and permits and, and dealing with the city uh which you know they they do a lot of that stuff and uh 
I don't always know what's happening with all that stuff, but, uh, you know, it, it took a lot longer than it was supposed to, you know, we heard the complaints from customers all the time. When are you going to open up an East Dallas? Uh, so, you know, it, it definitely took longer, but, uh, you know, we, we, we were fired up to get it going, you know, and awesome. Uh, yeah. Once we got all those permits and everything was kind of stuff, it was just like, we had that holy shit moment when Pizza Expo happened and, mm -hmm. and you know, I was like to be able to go there. But it was like, when I came back, that's when we were on full throttle with opening. Yeah. We were opening in, in a couple of days, uh, still training staff. So uh, that's when it got real. But uh, it's been great. You know, like anything, it's growing pains. And, uh, you know, the first week is always a little interesting for sure, <laughs> but we were, we have a great team and, and we were ready for it and, you know, willing to do anything to make it happen too. And right now we're only open, uh, at dinner. We open at four o'clock daily. So we're not open well, for lunch. Gives us the mornings to do prep and, and, you know, get, get everything really situated before dinner. Well, I wanted to ask you that you had mentioned that, you know, it was in your eyes relatively easy to train some staff to make Detroit style. Cause it's, it's a whole different you animal from what you guys do at Tony <laughs> Russell and Zoli's, but yeah. um, was it difficult in, in today's uh, you know working climate to get staff in general? Or I mean, was it difficult to staff Thunderbirds? Did that ever come across your mind in opening it? It's like, well, we can open it. We we get everything else in place, but now we got to get people to work for it. Uh, or was it just we're going to do this and we'll deal with stuff as it comes in? Uh, I guess a little of both. Like I, I knew I was going to be here. Our pizza manager Jared Bassett is a workhorse. This guy, he's unbelievable. And for me to say that, like, I take my cap to him. Uh, reminds me of when I was younger. Uh, I still got a little gas in the tank, but Jared uh, put, you know, especially the first the first month we were open, a uh, ton of hours. I did everything, anything we asked. I knew I was going to be here. Uh, Chef Bakovac, our, our culinary director, was, was very hands-on, you know, with mm -hmm. all the prep and production, especially in the first couple of weeks. So we did exactly that, kind of, kind of powered through it, uh, powered through the opening, and, and we're slowly staffing up, slowly, uh, okay. little by little. We get small, small victories. Uh, we hired a couple of people last week, and and we're getting there. The schedule is getting full. We'll probably open up uh, seven days, hopefully, starting next week. Too. Right now, we're closing on Sunday just to kind of, or initially we were just to get everybody a day off, right? Uh, Day of sanity, we know it's it's not open. And that being said, we still had some prep that had to be done that day. But uh, <laughs> get everybody a day of rest because some of the guys were going you know, six days, and then yeah. now uh, we are getting staffed up. And, you know, we're we're feeling okay. the same effect that everybody is uh, with the labor shortage. It's it's tough. It's did tough that happen? Uh, did that have any effect on your decision to open up only for lunches, or, or not open up for lunches, but only at dinner time? Or I mean, is it something that People no, I mean that, that was going to happen. That was going to happen from from the start, at any rate. Oh, you know? okay. And and it it might it might. I mean, we might open for dinner. For that's just the way it is, you know. Open for dinner type deal. Not necessarily because of staffing, but uh, I mean that's something we're we're going to figure out, you know. Yeah. Uh, whether it's worth it to open a little bit earlier too. Uh, yeah. But yeah, we we just had our goal from the start was very much like that like just you know we'll, we'll make the rules obviously we let our customers know but uh there were a couple of nights where we ran out we ran out we sold out <laughs> you know we made over 300 pies between our small and our, and our large and and we sell out and you know uh it's a good thing it's a good problem to have uh and, well yeah it is so. and and i do want to mention i do want to let everybody know every day yeah well, then, then you got issues. You there are other issues uh, that you guys got to sort out. But I did want to let everybody know. Go to um, Thunderbird Pies Facebook, and there's a nice exchange in there about how people can't get their pizzas on a weekend. And I won't put it up. I'll make you guys search for it. But it's it's worth it. It'll put a smile on your face. But I mean, that just shows you that man, that demand is there. And you know, once you guys, like you said, staff up, maybe you can work it on being open seven days a week. But having that mental health day is always nice. Always. You got to refresh yourself, not have to think about anything except what you want to. Um, so now that you've uh, you've got some staff coming in, I mean, you guys are you're saying you're doing pretty well on that. But there's been a lot of food shortages yeah. and stuff recently. Has that affected? Um, I've actually Connie Rosso or Zoli's and Thunderbirds, um, or are there different yeah, products? Yeah. Or are you running into different shortages for different uh, stores? Uh, uh, pretty much the same. 
that, you know, at, at all the stores. We use different products, right, between Connie Rosso's or wood-fired Neapolitan uh, mm-hmm. type pizza. And, and obviously this is Detroit, so it's a, a New York style or East Coast uh, pizza. But uh, a lot of the ingredients are the same, especially like the toppings and that too. Yeah. So we're just right. Re- yeah. I mean, a, a lot of, a lot of pivoting, even if it's only for a couple of days trying to sub something or we're out of it, but that supply chain has been uh, challenging to say the least. And, and it seems like every week there is something that, you know, is either going to be short on or, you know, we have to use something else for a couple of days. Yeah. But we've, we've actually been really fortunate because it hasn't, like like all, all the things that 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 have happened where we have been shortened it hasn't affected our, our product at all you know and i can say that with with confidence believe me i'm kind of a pizza snob you know <laughs> so they tell me i can't have my cheese and i'd be like what i gotta make something different and and like i said we were real fortunate uh that that it hasn't been major things and and our purveyors you know we work with them we talk with them every day so we're trying to stay a step ahead and and knowing Mm -hmm. hey you know next week we might be a little low on on i mean whatever it may be flour i would say and immediately looking for something that would substitute to to just get us through and uh another thing too is it's the the things that they have been short on it's only been a couple of days too hasn't been any any major hiccups per se but uh very challenging to say the least yeah and the prices so, of, of everything is, as you know, it's just uh, craziness. Uh, and again, this was, there was no, I mean, a lot of these things didn't even start happening until after you guys opened Thunderbirds, right? So it's not yeah. even like you were considering it necessarily. So um, do you, are you guys proactively calling your, your vendors every week and distributors, or are they being good about reaching out to you and letting you know when you're going to be a shortage? Or how would you suggest somebody – in the same situation or just anybody today, you know, make sure that they're going to get all the stuff they need. I, I would be proactive, right? Get with your salespeople, have them make sure their connections are going to be there too. Yeah. Uh, because, because of that, like, you don't want them telling you uh, all of a sudden one day, like, Hey, guess what? I don't have your flower today. Uh, they, they should be able to know days in advance if there is a gap in, in products too. But I think it's like anything. I, I, we, we, we're not going to wait. And to find out, we, we kind of yeah. ask. So we do, we check. We have a great relationship with, with uh, you know, all of our purveyors, as I'm sure a lot of people do, right? We don't just buy from people. We have relationships behind any product. Uh, and, and even you know, with our pur- purveyors, these are guys that we, you know, they're almost like family now. So, uh, yeah, yeah a, lot, a lot of communications. It seems like every morning I wake up to an email from, from our, our Benny Keith sales rep, Jonathan Bell, who's <laughs> Uh, just he's incredible is what it is too. So he's like having him, uh, you know, his communication and, and just his, his smarts, you know, having him in our corner has been huge. Good. Huge. And but, you know, really everything. Yeah. Our produce company, well, everybody's been, been great. Well, that's good. I was, yeah, I was kind of hoping that that was going to be the answers that they are jumping ahead of the train too and letting you know and giving you a little bit of a heads up but i guess it wouldn't hurt for everybody to call them at least once or every two weeks or so just to make sure mm-hmm. so things are going my friend uh brian spangler yesterday and that, that's exactly oh, yeah. what he's doing he's like i'm not waiting for them to tell me that that they're out you know he's like i'm i'm making sure that they have it kind of deal so uh <laughs> yeah being being proactive love that guy yeah love brian no yeah he's <laughs> I like his first name too. No, he's uh, met him a couple times, I think. Oh wait, no, I think. Oh shoot, I'm sorry. I'm thinking Brian Edler from uh, different guy. Apologies, Brian okay. Spangler. I might have met you too. <laughs> I just made a new friend, sort of today. I guess I don't know. Um, so I mean, I like that um, the the tip of just getting you know being out there, being proactive. Um, so I mean, some of these concerns that other people are having about opening, you guys, you were aware of, cognizant of, but you really didn't focus on that you didn't dwell on it and let it kind of ruin your plans to go forward i mean you were talking earlier about um just to me offline that uh, you guys are looking at some pretty aggressive growth in the future for um that whole family of of restaurants are there any tips that you could give like a one do and one don't for somebody looking to opening up in this current industry uh industry uh, climate excuse me 
uh, you know, it, it's definitely a tough time to open restaurants. Yeah. Uh, what I would say is uh, just start small, you know, do something smaller. <laughs> okay. uh, as a, you know, you, you wouldn't know that if you went to Zoli's and you saw the 5,000 square foot Zoli. But I mean, at, at that point, we, <laughs> Jay didn't, you know, open that in a pandemic. That was just uh, something that, you know, in Texas, everything's bigger. Uh, but, uh, you know, something small, uh, small menu, you know, if I, if I could give advice on that as well, too, and, and that's something that we did here at Thunderbird was, uh, we do, we don't have a big kitchen. We, we, you know, four appetizers, a couple of salads, uh, we do a burger mm -hmm. and, and, and a, uh, spicy chicken sandwich as well. And then just 12 pizzas. So we actually shorten our pizza menu up when we open here as well, too. Uh, okay. and, uh. You know, low, keeping a lower inventory. The price of, of, of everything has, has gone up. I mean, I, I keep seeing this one post on Facebook where it's just a picture of showing fryer oil and, and the price of frying oil going up. You know, from last year at this time, it was $21 and now it's 44 For an example, it's like twice as much. Well, everything has gone up. Uh, as I, I know all, everyone out there, all the pizza people and restaurant people are, are you know, they you know this. It's it's tougher now than it's ever been, you know, to, to survive or to make a box, yeah. you know? So, uh, um, dot your eyes and cross your teeth. If you're opening a place, you know, definitely smaller, definitely, uh, uh, yeah. I mean, that, that, that's well, all I, the advice I give. We, we have a, a, you know, a big team, a corporate team and, and a lot of communication. Uh, so it's actually, you know, for me personally, it's a lot of fun because, these guys are, are really, really good at what they do. Uh, and Jay's just that Jay Jerry is at the front of it, just kind of steering that bus and doesn't yeah. do it a lot more than that, of course. But, uh, you know, he's, he finds these locations and, and Chef Bakovac as well. Uh, they find them, but they, when we open a place, we have people, you know, that are doing certain things. I focus on the pizza, right. Uh, yeah. the kitchens, uh, but, but we have a team and, and I'm fortunate to, to be a part of it, you know, do you think somebody should, um, if they're looking to try to open up, if they just have the itch and they have to do it, should, and you said start small, should they maybe start with a, a ghost kitchen or a pop-up if they have access to kitchen facilities to use, or should they start there before investing into something larger? Absolutely. You know, I, I'd recommend that recommend that highly nowadays. Uh, I had a friend of mine that was asking me about that even the other day, and I was like, yeah, man, I mean, just see see if there's a demand for your 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 food you know and, yeah. and exactly like that start small do it right and and once you build up that demand and, and for us here at thunderbird it was like and this is do i we say this in the most humble way but like when we were opening up we knew we were going to be busy right off the start you know and a lot of that is because we had the ghost kitchen and we actually you know we, we stopped selling them a month before we opened here just not to necessarily cut people off, but that did, you know, it, it, people were going in for a little Thunderbird. So when we did open, <laughs> yeah. uh, we knew it was going to be nuts and, and we were lucky, but we also, you know, the test, the, the, the ghost kitchen, I believe did, uh, helps build up that hype, you know? Uh, yeah. and then when you do open up your, your brand is established. Uh, yeah. Uh, let me ask you on the other side of that coin then, um, is there any tips for somebody who's a, doesn't want to do the ghost kitchen or pop up. They want to go full brick and mortar. Um, any suggestion for that, or say don't? <laughs> I don't know. I mean, yeah, like no, you said you I, guys I, are pushing I, through. You're doing something right. Um, mm -hmm. What do you think to, it is? To each their own. I mean, when you when you open a restaurant, you're gonna be ready to work and 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 be there, right? I mean, if you're an owner and it's an independent pizzeria and you're there all the time, and uh, you know that that's the part you need to be be ready for too it's it's mm -hmm. it's one thing doing a pop-up and we have a lot of people around dallas that'll do these pop-ups and, and and the pizza some of the pizzas look amazing and stuff and you know when you open up a brick and mortar it's it's a lot different than making 50 pizzas a couple of nights a week you know now you're open you know and obviously even if you close the day right you, you're still doing it six days and and you're dealing yep. with more volume as well too so uh you know, one thing I would say is, you know, it, it, most people that are opening a place, they know if they're ready to do it, you know, and, and, uh, 
Yeah, I do. I do get a little excited when we open up a new place because, especially with this, it was a new concept too. It's just I, I get a little giddy. I played a lot of sports, yeah. so I, I, <laughs> I get my whole sports mind mindset going on. And you know, opening day was game day, so uh, yeah. And and you know, thank God well, just everything make, has worked out. Yeah. Well, I mean, I guess you're saying it's just make sure you know what you're getting into if you do one or the other, and do obviously do the research, which we hope they would have done in the first place, but. Let yeah. me ask you. Yeah, and I'm sure everyone's doing that, you know. Yeah. You you opened Thunderbirds next right next door to is it Azoli's or was it a Connie Rosso? Direct directly next door. Connie Rosso. Like the same building <laughs> just the next door over. Yeah, uh, I mean what what was the thoughts on that? Just it kind of became available? Was it to kind of synergize both locations? Do you guys have you seen a drop um in, in the Connie Rosso sales since this or is it even an uh, no, issue? No, no drop. No, thank God. I mean, as I knock on wood here, but uh, no, I <laughs> mean that, that that's one of our it's our busiest store in the company, and all of our offsite events go go, go out of this, this location here as well. Uh, this this where Thunderbird is now, like it used to be, it was called on rotation. Oh, sorry about that. It's called on, on <laughs> rotation, and uh, it was I guess like a tap room type of deal, and mm -hmm. and. Uh, I, that's where Jay comes in and he knows about all this stuff. Cause I guess it was on his radar, you know, and then I heard the buzz about, you know, talking about opening up and initially, uh, of course there are comments from whether it's out, you know, you're going to open a pizzeria next to a pizzeria. You know? <laughs> and I thought about it. That's when I actually started smiling. Cause I was like, that would, that would totally work. Uh, this area, yeah, it's a big parking lot out there. And, and like I, I kind of mentioned it to you earlier, I'm like, the only thing that's similar, with this the these styles of pizza that are called pizza mm -hmm. i mean it, it's completely different you know it, if it was directly next door to Zoli's, maybe it would be a little different but like our wood-fired neapolitan pizza i mean it's 900 degree oven right it's 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 a uh it's an art like that kind of pizza alone but but it's completely different right. you know it's different flour different, i mean the dough is completely different the sauce the cheese uh some of the toppings are the same, but uh, just everything about it from, from the oven, the dough, the sauce, the cheese, everything's different uh, that people can have best of all two worlds. Now they can get a Thunberg pizza and eat it on the Connie Rosso patio out there. So uh, it's pretty cool. I do like that. So, I mean, but and again, it, it all kind of goes to the same place in the end. If you think about it, it's the same company making, it, it's all making everybody better. Yeah. So even if it was stealing, but like you said, these guys, um, it's a completely different animal. It's like having a dog store and a cat store right next to each other. You're going to go to one place <laughs> for a specific thing. So, you know, and like, like this, this location, this part of Dallas where we are, White Rock Lake, it, it's kind of, it's a great area to be where, uh, especially through, you know, we, we deliver, deliver through a third party. Uh, that mm -hmm. I'm sure we could talk for, for an hour about that whole deal. <laughs> but just in general, it's like, you know, it, it, where, where we're able to deliver from, in this area compared to where we had our ghost kitchen in Addison. I mean, it's night and day uh, to the amount of houses and businesses and, and downtown. Uh, we're only not even 10 minutes away from downtown, too. So location, of, of you know, was, was a big part of it, too. It was, uh, it's a good spot. Awesome. Yeah. All right, man. Well, I think we've kind of covered a lot of uh, what we were talk wanting to talk about. I mean, you gave us some tips on people who look to either start a ghost kitchen or maybe in this climate even open a brick and mortar um i talked a little bit about you know staffing and, and food shortages and how people can do it. and honestly i'll probably mind this and figure out another reason to call you we could do another episode about those things but is there awesome. one final message you want to let the industry know about um just a final affirmation and a final message about um connie rosso zoli's and, and thunderbirds uh, what do you want us to know? i don't know you know i mean uh, we're here we're, we're in texas and uh <laughs> you know uh, we like to have fun and make pizza, you know, and, and part of me moving out here was exactly for that reason, right? It's like, yeah, I remember telling my family when I was moving to Texas and they were like, why would you move to Texas? And, you know, uh, we have a lot of fun. We make pizza. Uh, that's what I'd like to say. I don't know. As, as uh, you know, I love everyone out there, especially the people that are in this business and, and doing the same thing every day. Uh, you know, I love picking up my phone and calling up, you know, like, I, I think I mentioned yesterday that I called Brian Spangler. I talk to him about every week, but uh, I love picking up the phone and just calling people 
And because yeah. everybody's going through this, you know, the similar problems. I remember when we spoke even earlier before this and you're like, are you, are you facing labor shortages? And it's like, oh yeah, we're facing, we're facing all that. Uh, and we're all in this together. And sometimes it helps yeah. talking to somebody else that has the same problems as you do, you know? So it keeps my head yeah. clear and, and, uh, yeah, just, I, I love making phone calls and shaking people up and, and, uh, more importantly, trying to have fun amongst the, this craziness. And, uh, that's tough too, yeah. but we do it. No, absolutely. Absolutely, which kind of actually I was going to let you go, but I wanted to ask you, I think you had said that um, you had said you, the expo, you couldn't even go there to compete or anything because this was kind of in the midst of um, it, of your opening week almost. But uh, are you excited about that, getting ready? Do you think it's going to last? I mean, I would assume you probably missed some competition or live events and things like that, just getting out to the trade shows. and. Uh you're asking about the trade shows if I can't. Oh, I'm asking, did you miss the competition level? Uh, I, I did. I, I kind of kicked myself for not competing this year too, uh, because <laughs> of, there was so much going on here. And then when I got there, I was like, son of a gun, I should have just done it, you know? And, and, uh, but yeah, I, I look forward to, uh, I mean, hopefully being able to, to, you know, have these, uh, our events, you know, pizza and pots of the Northeast and, and, and the pizza expo and just, just having one. And, and I know a lot of people said, you know, it wasn't the same and it wasn't as big. And, you know, for me, it was just so cool to be able to still do it, you know, and I know it wasn't the yeah. same per se, but uh, no, I look forward to, to all of that. And, and, you know, uh, with my team now with the world pizza champions, it's like the opportunity to go to Italy and compete whenever that may be, uh, I'll be there. And, and I look forward to that. Uh, I've been waiting my whole life for that. So, uh, sounds like it's, uh, happening, down. uh, in April. So fingers crossed. Awesome. We'll see you yeah, there. Fingers crossed. I'll be <laughs> and let there. that be known guys. You got a free pass this year in Vegas. Lee will be back next year. Watch yourselves. <laughs> All right, Lee. Well, I do appreciate everything. I want to thank our audience for tuning in and staying focused on this. Uh, this video will live forever on the interwebs or at pmq.com at Pizza TV. Lee, thank you so much for your time today, brother. All of you out there, be safe, be sane, and treat each other thank well you. and enjoy some pizza. Take, Take care, it easy, Lee. Thank I'll see you, you soon, brother. Bye-bye.